This video is intended to be a short and sweet video. Of course, you get me going, there's no telling how long this thing may stretch out. But let's give it a try with focusing on just one verse, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. And I share the passage with you in part a little bit each time as we go along. We read first, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Apostle is one who is sent. Now, in the sense in which we use it in the case of Paul, there's a, a much tighter definition of what an apostle is. But if we look at it broadly as one who is sent by Christ Jesus, well, then we find out also that this is true of, well, who is it true of? We think of Paul as being someone special who went through a lot of terrible things and was fully committed to Christ and just kept on pushing, kept on working, kept on spreading the word, going through all different, all difficult times within his life. Yet we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the following words. We are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We, as Christians, you and I, we too are called to be ambassadors sent directly by Jesus Christ. So it's not enough for us to just be saved and then lay back and say, well, all is right with eternity. I know that I'm guaranteed salvation in Jesus Christ as my Savior just by trusting in Him for His precious gift of salvation. No, there's, there's a bit more involved in it. And step number one is to realize that as a Christian, you are an ambassador of Christ. And you are to be spreading the word directly from Jesus Christ to all those in that other world, that lost world, that the majority, the bulk of the world's population um, populates. This is your job, your calling as an ambassador. It is not okay for you to lay back and say, well, I'm saved, and so I'll go to church every Sunday morning and make my appearance and put a few dollars in the collection plate, and I'm doing what Christ wants me to do. No. Christ calls you and I to be ambassadors, his ambassadors, and to spread his message throughout the world to everyone that we come in contact with. Anyway, back to Ephesians chapter 1. That passage continues by the will of God. Here is just simply an emphasis that this is by the will of God. It's, it's a reminder that it's not anything that you did other than to respond in faith to the urging of the Holy Spirit. If you are saved, we know that it was the Holy Spirit involved in it. He called you to be saved. It was the will of God, and we rejoice in the fact that you actually said yes, and you trusted Jesus and his atoning death upon the cross as full payment for the sins that you have committed, and so you've placed your trust in him as Savior, and that's it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You are an ambassador, and you have been saved by grace through faith. That passage in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, continues with this next short phrase, to the saints who are at Ephesus. If you're not getting it up to this point, you should get it at this point. You are not called to lay back and just coast along and claim the name of Jesus Christ without being committed to it. Here it continues. Paul references us, and remember, Paul was writing under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. God told him to put this in black and white, so to speak, to the saints at Ephesus. Yes, that is you. You are a saint. Not in the sense that Roman Catholics would typically refer to one as a saint, as someone who is called out and extra special among, among Christians, but rather every born-again believer 
is considered to be one of the saints. We're usually referred to as a large group, the group of saints. If you go through scripture, the plural saints is used the overwhelming majority of times. You are part of that group. You're considered to be a saint. Are you living like a saint? Really? Are you living like a saint? And you say, no, how am I supposed to do that? And I say to you, that's a good question for God. You ask God, what can you do in your life in order to live more like a saint? Because you are referred to as a saint by no one less than the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, who refers to us born-again believers as being saints in Christ. That's you. And he says that tied in with this, finishing up Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. There's that faithfulness again, that we're supposed to be involved, we're supposed to be committed. In the modern church, we just lay back, we walk the aisle, and we make a profession of faith, and we say that we are saved, and we think that's the extent of it. No, you and I are to be living for Christ. Your Christ, your life, every aspect of it is to be glorifying to Christ. We think, well, this is the modern world, and there's so many more Christians now. I just put in my, um, I live on a day-to-day -day basis, um, not getting drunk all the time, or not doing this, uh, focusing on the knots. I don't do those, those knots that I'm not supposed to do. But those people that lived thousands of years ago, they had it so much easier. It was so much easier for them to be committed. And I say to you, that's rubbish. Stop and think about their standard of living back then. No indoor plumbing and everything that goes along with the relatively primitive society in which they lived. They did not have it easier than you and I. These people that Paul wrote to, the saints in Ephesus, they were committed to Christ they were considered to be saints and they were happy with the term and Christ is calling you and me to do the same thing, to be happy with the, the term saint and live appropriately. If you're not living as a saint, however you envision it in your life, then I suggest that you take it to Christ in prayer and ask him what you can do in your life to be living more like a saint that is glorifying him. Is that challenge enough for the moment? Good, I thought it might be. Thank you.